What's up, everybody, and welcome to Loop Live. My name is Matt McCoy. I'm the founder of loopcommunity.com, and I'm the host of the Loop Live show. And today we have a very special guest with us. We've got Meredith Andrews, worship leader, songwriter, artist. Um, and I'm just really excited to have her join us today. We're going to talk about uh, worship leading. She has a wealth of knowledge of worship leading. She's been doing it for a long time. Uh, she and I actually worked together at a church for quite a while. And so I'm just, I'm really excited just to catch up and to talk about all things worship leading and uh, kind of hear too about new music that she's releasing. So wherever you're watching this from, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, if you've got questions about what we're talking about, go ahead and type them into the chats, whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, type them into the chats. And if we get some good questions, we might take some questions live. So type in your questions. And without further ado, here is Meredith Andrews. Meredith, so great to see you. So good to see you, Matt. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been it's been a while. I think we've had you on the show before, but it's been a couple years yeah. and a lot That's has right. happened since then. So <laughs> you're in Nashville, right? That's correct. Yeah. And uh, releasing music, leading worship. What church are you at now? Are you, are you, is there a place that you're leading worship at? You know, regularly uh, I'm just, or yeah, I'm just volunteering at the belonging. Um, cool. We've been there now for I guess five or six years, and um, it was a definite. It was like a lot different coming from off of staff. You know, being on staff at a church for a number yeah. of years, ten years, and then um, starting to lead worship from like more of a volunteer standpoint. But I love it; it takes the pressure off, <laughs> and then yeah. I still get to travel a good bit and lead worship. You know different churches around the country. So it's really yeah. sweet. It is nice. I, cause yeah, we were on staff together at a church here in Chicago for a long time. Yeah. Um, and I haven't been on staff at a church since then, but I've been recently just helping out with a church plant and just volunteering yeah. and just helping them. You know, there's 50 people in the room. It's super awesome. low key, low stress. And I love it. I honestly love just being able to lead worship. Cause that's what for I love. Sure. That's, that's the part of it that I love doing. Yeah, and totally. so it's it, I so I totally get it on that. So can you just share for people who maybe don't uh, know your story? Can you just share a little bit about yourself and how you even got started as a worship leader, as a songwriter? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I mean, I grew up in a tiny little town. We'll go back to the beginning. I'll try not to make this super yeah. long, but I grew up in a tiny town in North Carolina, a little church, a little Assembly of God church, and my mom helped lead worship, like she volunteered. She also helped with the kids' ministry, and my dad was an elder, and so we were there all the time, and I loved it. I basically grew up in her pew. Um, I grew up listening to my mom practice for Sunday mornings, you know, whether she was um, leading on the praise team or she was doing like special music. I, she had this little karaoke machine, and I would just sit and listen to her every time she practiced. And I don't really know how it came about, but when I was six, um, somebody asked me to do the offering special, <laughs> and it was I Love You, Lord. So that song has always had like a really special place in my heart, Such a the good simplicity song. and the beauty of it, yeah. And um, when I was 12, I started writing songs. My first song had six verses and no chorus, because I didn't <laughs> have any clue about like song format or what it's supposed to look like. Was it a worship um, song? I mean, it was about the cross. I don't know. Like it was, yeah, yeah it was about Jesus. It was all, it was, yeah. Everything was always about, you know, my faith. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you could, if anybody else could sing it. Maybe I like, I guess I thought I was a modern yeah. day hymn writer or something, you know, like, yeah, yeah. But you got to start somewhere, right? So I would be in my basement on my little um, chord keyboard, just recording all these songs that I was writing. A lot of them would start as lyrics first, and then I'd put melody to them. Um, and I'd put them on a tape deck. I sent them to the copyright office in DC because I didn't really know what else to do with them. But I started singing yeah. and leading for our youth group and then for our church around that time as well. And um, really, like, I just couldn't get enough of the presence of God. You know, like music was always a thing for me. I was always drawn to it. Um, it came fairly naturally to me. Um, but it was really being in the presence of God with the people of God that just um, captured my heart. And so um, 
yeah, that's kind of where it started just in my youth group days, like learning to play keys for our youth band and, um, and leading worship there. And there were nights when I would literally be under the keyboard, under the power of God, because it was the power of God was so strong and that's how I grew up. So, um, when I was 17, I went to a Rebecca St. James concert and I, um, responded to an invitation forward and it was really just a, another like layer of surrender for me. Cause I felt so stirred that night watching Rebecca do what she did and just felt like, wow, I'd love to do something like that. Um, but God, it's yours. Like whatever you want to do with me, with my life, I'm yours. And it was just this, here you go. I- I'm going to say yes to you, whatever the question is. I don't even know what the question is yet. And so in that moment, it was like the Lord just said to me, Meredith, be faithful where I've placed you. And so as I'm there in that place, that was, that became like my whole motto. Like, how do I be faithful in these little things here? You know, I'm leading worship Mm -hmm. in my youth group. I'm leading worship for my church. I'm writing these songs, you know, just between me and the Lord. And, and that carried on as I went to Liberty, um, led worship there. And then from Liberty, um, was hired at a church in Chicago where we met and, um, was there for 10 years. And in the middle of that, uh, signed a record deal with a, record label in Nashville and, um, and just started, just continue to write songs. And that's kind of where the journey started. So. Yeah, that's such a good story. I know a lot of worship leaders have that similar story as far as the start in youth group. I know that was yeah. my story too, like just leading worship yeah. in youth group. What, um, would you say there was a pivotal moment that actually really kind of launched you into the songwriter artist world? Was it and I guess what I'm wondering is how much of a role did maybe the university you chose or the job later that you chose have an impact on that? Because I do know there's also a lot of worship leaders watching this who are even at a time where they're actually trying to decide, like, where do they go after high school? Do they go sure. to college? Do they go steady worship leading? Like, how much of an impact do you think all that had? Well, I think it was kind of these, like, if, if this makes sense, like these micro impacts, right? Because it, it was all building on one another. When I was in college, I wasn't even sure what I wanted to major in. I had started going to Guatemala to this orphanage, um, and I went six times at the time during the um, time that I was at Liberty, and just thought like I'm going to move to Guatemala. Sorry, that's my dog. (laughs) I'm going to move to Guatemala. I'm gonna. um... Lola, why? Nobody's here. (laughs) Sorry. Um, I'm going to move to Guatemala. I'm going to work in this orphanage, and. but my junior year, I remember I was singing as this song with uh, the campus band, which I had been a part of um, my junior and senior year. And I had sung this song. It was Sing to the King. I had sung it a thousand times, I felt like, at Liberty. But there was this one night in November of my junior year where I just knew. It, it wasn't even that I heard God say anything. It was just that I knew that this was what was on my life to do. And it had nothing really to do with music. It was more about calling people into the presence of God to encounter God in a way Mm -hmm. that was just completely transformational. Um, But my major was in family and child development, again, because I still really had a heart for nations, especially um, children that were growing up in hard situations and really thought I was going to work in this orphanage in Guatemala. And then I was offered a job in Chicago and I prayed about it and knew for sure I was supposed to be there. So it really was all these different things that kind of built upon one another. And I think, you know, a lot of people will even ask me like, how are you doing this? Like, how did you get to where you are? And I, and I just have to go, it was God because everybody's, Mm -hmm. everybody's journey is so different, Matt, you know, like you couldn't recreate my journey if you tried really, it was just like the Lord opening doors and, um, bringing people into my life that would speak into my life and um, and decisions that I felt like he was calling me to make, you know. And, yeah. Um, but when I when I went to Harvest in Chicago, um, I got an email from a guy in Nashville named Jason Ingram, and he just said, hey, I've heard your um, album that you released. It was an independent record that I had uh, recorded and released my senior year. Yeah. And he, he just said, I'd love to, um, meet. I'd love for you to come to Nashville and start writing. And so that's when I started coming to Nashville, like once a month, um, yeah. while I was on staff at this church. So, yeah, that's so awesome. It is amazing too, just how God opens up all the doors. He aligns everything. And yeah, you're right. You can't like really rewrite or write someone's story. Like only God can really direct yeah, uh, exactly. the path of that. And it's so 
you're yeah you've released a ton of music the latest song that people probably watching this has, have heard that's brand new off the press is make room yeah. um you did that with sarah reeves and chris mclarney can you tell us mm -hmm. just about it how you three came to work on it together sure well i've known sarah and chris for a while i love their hearts i love who they are um but I guess it started even before that because I heard this song. It's not a song that I've written. It's just one that has, it kind of carried me through 2020. And um, I love the people who wrote it. They showed it to me one night when I was actually at, at Josh Farrow's house for a night of worship. And um, I had written with him and Rebecca that day. And um, anyways, they were just having this night of worship and they played that song and I was just like on my face. You know, it was just so impactful for me. And then in the, in the moments kind of after that, you know, going through 2020 and all of that entailed, whenever I would spend time with the Lord, that would be my go-to song that I would put on, you know? So I would just listen to it over and over again. And I would just, it was my prayer. It really was just like the cry of my heart. God, I'm just making space. I'm just making room. Yeah. Would you just like obliterate everything in my context that is not of you, that is not what you're saying to me, that's not what you're asking of me, you know, it really is just like, this is my surrender. And so, um, I, I don't even remember how exactly it came about, but I was talking with one of the guys from my label and about how much I love the song. And he's like, well, why don't you release a version of it? And I was like, really? Like, should I, you know, I, I really mm -hmm. do feel like this is what I want to say to the Lord. And he's like, yeah, let's do like a collaboration with it. And it just so happened that Sarah and Chris said yes. And, and I love what they bring to it because they're not only are their voices so unique, just what they carry is so unique. You know, I think that just speaks to the body of Christ. Like yeah. there's room at the table for everyone. Everybody has a different anointing and something that they bring, something that they carry. And I just love that we got to do it together. Yeah, it's a great song. I remember yeah. hearing it from Lucas and what's his wife's name again? I'm trying to remember. Lucas, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember them hearing them play that song just acoustic like gosh it was probably a couple of years ago when they were when uh word was doing the church will sing album yep yeah and i was like this song is just killer it's gonna go yeah big and wide so i think that's awesome um we actually have all the tracks for that song so make sure you if you're watching this view uh go check out that song listen to it if you haven't already get the tracks so i want to change gear gears a little bit and talk about you know we have a lot of worship leaders listening to this you posted something probably five or six months ago in the fall about positive leaders and we saw it and i had actually never heard someone talk about this specifically around worship leading this idea of mm. positive leaders and i kind of want to hear what your thoughts were when you were writing this um because you hear this talked a lot about about leadership you know people who are leading sure. businesses or corporations but from a worship leader perspective and I don't even know if you meant it for worship leaders and maybe, but maybe we can like kind of tie it into that. But you said something like, you know, pot of positive leader, leaders don't lead because they want recognition or enemies. They lead because there's something they must do, build, create, transform and change. They lead because it's who they are and what they're meant to do. I'd be curious from your perspective, you know, when you were writing this, just kind of a background of what this post was about and what do you think makes a positive worship leader? Yeah. Well, I think just for me, what I've even come to terms with in the last couple of years is that <clears throat> my identity isn't in being a worship leader. Um, but on the same, in the, in the same sense, like I also feel very strong about leadership, um, about, um, leaving the world a better place than when I found it. And so you can get into the macro and the micro of that. Um, but I guess as a whole, I, I had quite like this upside down, um, well, just like my world turned upside down a lot of ways in a good way at the beginning of 2020, kind of coming to terms with the fact like I can't travel, I can't do what I feel like I'm put on this earth to do. So mm -hmm. what does it look like? And, and, and I had to ask myself the question like, does my life still have purpose, even if I can't like be leading people in worship? And it doesn't necessarily change the fact that this is where I kind of concluded and what I came to is that it doesn't change the fact that 
I'm actually called to lead. But in the, in the leadership sense, it's not for myself. It's not to lead people mm. to me. It's not even to build a brand. It's really just to build something in advance that, that advances the kingdom of God. Like that is what I feel so strongly that I am put on the earth to do. And so even when I wrote that post, it really just was like, why am I leading? What is the motivation behind this? If Is it because I want recognition? Is it because I, my identity is so tied to it? And I had to get to this place where I could just honestly say like, no, it's just in me to build. It's in me to create. It's in me to encourage. It's in me to pour into other people. And, and I love getting to do that, whether it's on a stage, whether it's behind scenes, whether it's with my kids, you know, there's all these different capacities that we get to lead. But I think when you come back to the heart behind it and the motivation, like that's everything that is the foundation. Um, yeah. because then I, I, I've said this for so long and it still rings true that we can't take people where we haven't been ourselves. And so even like going back to make room, for instance, that was a song that ministered to me personally that I sang to the Lord in my living room with tears in my eyes, you know, just like as a confession, as a, an act of surrender. And so it kind of, now I get to release it and call people to that space as well. You know, that's just a, like a smaller example, but yeah. I really do believe that like, especially as worship leaders, if we want to lead people anywhere, we have to make sure that we're going there first, that we have, that we know the voice of God, that we know the heart of our father, that we know his word and we know his heart for his people, because that's when we can actually influence other people and say, Hey, come on, come with me. I've experienced this. I've encountered this. And I promise you, it's going to change your life. It's going to take you from death to life. It's going to take you out of the darkness. It's going to remind you of who you are in Jesus and how much he loves you and what he's called you to. And so that is just like, that's what's massively on my heart. And I guess that's kind of where that post came from. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, so you have a lot of experience leading worship and you've been on staff at churches where you've, you've kind of also been able to observe different leadership styles. And I'd be curious, are there any practical tips that you have for worship leaders of how they can be a positive influence to their teams? Yeah. Well, you know, I think when I think about positive influence, you know, I think it all comes back to um, really just going, okay, Lord, like, what is my purpose and what is my message and what is my identity? What have you put me on this earth to do? Because I think if we're just trying to think of positive messages, I mean, I'm not saying that we won't be able to come up with something, but I, I really do believe that it comes back to like, as a worship leader, if I want to communicate something to my team, I have to go there first. And I also need to like, um, it has to be a, it has to be a private place of worship for me long before it comes like, long before I set foot on a stage. It has to be like, this is who I am. So again, I, I think it all just goes back to identity. I think it all goes back to, um, this is what the Lord has put on my life. And then we get to walk in that. Like, what is the authority that God has given us as, as followers of Jesus, as people who are in step, walking in step with him, as people who know his word, who know his heart, who love, yeah. um, who, you know, just love the Lord. Like, it just comes naturally from the, from that place. Yeah, right. And it's leading by example. Yeah, I know exactly, exactly. what you're saying there. Yes. How should worship leaders handle criticism when it comes their yeah. way? Right. Sure. Well, I mean, if we want to grow, we have to be willing yeah. to hear hard things. And mm -hmm. I think about that proverb that says, um, wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. And I really do believe that like, if we are to be sharpened, if we are to be, if we are to grow, if we are to, you know, have, um, more and more influence, more and more, um, you know, where we're hearing from the Lord, where we're able to pour out from this place of revelation yeah. from heaven. Like we've got to open ourselves up to this. Okay. Show me what I can't yeah. see. Yeah. Um, tell me what I need to know, what I am not able to figure out on my own. That's why we have people around us to sharpen us, to hold us accountable so that we can grow. Yeah. You know, you'll remember this, but I will say that I never grew more than from those Tuesday morning meetings when we yes. would review the weekend service and we'd all sit 100%. in a room and pull up the video of the worship service yeah. and we'd watch it together. 
and kind yeah. of just review and critique, you know, like what went well, what also didn't go well. It's amazing how when you watch yourself lead worship, you kind of see like, oh, wow, like I, um, it's a very humbling experience because you're like, For wow, sure. I could really do that better. Or maybe, you know, I need to prepare yeah. my speaking more better or, you know, I'm not engaging at all with congregation at all. It's like, I'm just kind of up there on my own. I mean, there's a million things that come across your head off, totally. off your mind. And like, it's a painful process, but you really grow and learn. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's why we all have to approach it with like open handedness and just going yeah. like, I want to learn. I want to grow. I want to be better than I was before. Like, so please speak into my life. Like now, granted, you know, there's a, a big difference between like criticism, cr corrective or creative criticism or constructive criticism and just being a critic. Like, we, yeah, it, you right. know, we don't need that. Like, I think you just have to make sure that the people that you're opening yourself up to, they're speaking into your life. They're people that love you, that you can trust, that you know are only going to say things um, for your good that are going to yeah. like help you. Um, again, just see the things that you wouldn't be able to see yeah. on your own otherwise. But it is so important that we take that posture of just humility and openness humility. and going like, I don't know everything that I think I know. So I'm, I'm totally willing to just go like, Hey, I'd love your feedback. I'd love to yeah. know, like, how did this hit you? Um, yeah. what are some areas you think I can grow in? Where are some places you think I can change? And that is so important. Yeah. That was the word that was coming to me too, is that's where, that's what's so important is the humility aspect of it. And then the flip side of this coin is how do you handle praise, you know? So you've got, yeah, if you've got totally. people coming up afterwards and saying, you know, just talking your head off about how well it went or how great you sounded, how we handle that is also very yeah. important. 100%. And I think it comes back to as well, like, Matt, like I have no illusions about myself and I realize mm. that everything that I have, I've received. Mm. I didn't... Um, it really is just like God has chosen to, for whatever reason, give me these gifts to steward, give me yeah. these relationships to steward, give me this knowledge and this wisdom. He's grown me over the years. But I, I also, I know that like, I did not get here on my own. And so I think when I realize like, Lord, you're the one who's done this, all this in my life, you're the one who's given me these gifts and these opportunities, like, then I get to, you know, every bit of praise that might come my way, I just get to remember, like, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for where God has brought me. I'm so grateful for the opportunities that I've been afforded. I'm so thankful for everything that he's like just put in my lap. And so I'm going to give it back to him. And so even with praise, you know, pe people would like, I was leading worship at a church in um, Denver this weekend. And just people would say like, you know, thank you for coming. We so enjoy when you're here. We just love you know, the way that you lead worship. And I just say, praise God, like praise God. And it genuinely is from my heart because I know that like, I'm just a human and I'm just a vessel and he gets, and he chooses to use us as his vessels. Yeah. And we get to partner with him in advancing the kingdom of God and the earth of loving people well, of pouring into their lives. Yeah. It's so good. Is there anything you'd want to share just in closing to worship leaders, songwriters who are watching this, you know, they all have come off of Easter weekend last week, they're probably, uh, you know, that was like the mountaintop moment totally. of church world. Anything you'd want to say just as an encouragement to uh, the people who are just in the trenches, you know, every week, every seven days, another service to plan, yeah. another team to, to lead. Absolutely. I would just encourage um, your listeners, every everybody who's serving in that capacity to continually um, just stay before the Lord because I understand like things can get routine, things can get mundane. And these, these truths that we're singing and we're um, declaring together, all those things, you know, that they can feel tired or like, well, we've said this so many times before, but when we constantly keep ourselves in the presence of God, asking him to renew our minds and refresh our hearts, and we're coming at it from this place of surrender, then um, we, we, it, it, it just is, it's like we're moving from glory to glory. It's like we're seeing God in ways that we never have before because he's, we never run out of his, his mystery, you know, like yeah. we never get to the end of who he is. And so as we're just continually saying, Lord, this is for you, this is through you, this is to you, this is about you. Um, 
it really is like this constant refreshing. And my prayer is that, as the word says, those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. And I love what Christy Knuckles talks about in her book. Um, she, she talks about not how we can get so stuck in this place of living for God when we're mm -hmm. actually meant to live from God. And when we live from God, it transforms everything because it's not a striving. It's not a, um, I have to do this. I, you know, obviously we have responsibilities and things we've been entrusted with, but it's more of just like, okay, God, I'm going to live from you. I'm going to hear from you and everything is going to come from the overflow of that. That's so good. That's so good. Thanks for sharing that. Absolutely. So what's, so, so to wrap this up, what's, what's next for you? What's on the horizon for Meredith Andrews? Are you, um, are you writing? Are you releasing music? Yeah. Are you, what's, what's happening? Tell us. Yeah, so I've been writing a ton. Um, hopefully, the plan is to have a few other songs released this summer because we've already got them recorded. There's three other songs besides Make Room that we're hoping to roll out this summer. Um, and then, yeah, planning on getting in the studio maybe around the same time. And That's awesome. Um, yeah, releasing some music. Are those going to be dropping as singles or are they, is it like an Yes, EP as or? singles. As That's singles, great. yeah. All right. Well, we'll stay tuned for that. Meredith, always good awesome. to see you. Thanks so much for taking you the time too, to, to do this. Absolutely. And hopefully I'll Thanks see you so and Jacob again. Thanks so much for having me. Soon. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Sounds right, good. We'll see Thanks, you later. Matt. Bye. See ya. All right. Great interview with Meredith. Meredith, thanks so much for joining us on that. If you have not listened to Meredith's music, make sure you go check it out. Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, wherever you listen to music, I'm sure it's all there. So just search for Meredith Andrews. And um, I think you'll be really blessed by her music. We also have all of uh, her tracks at Loop Community and charts are on Song Select. So check it out there. What is one thing that you are gonna walk away from this conversation with? What's one thing that maybe you're gonna think about to implement in your teams or at your church or in your worship leadership? Type it down into the comments. I wanna hear from you. I'm curious, what is it that you're walking away from this conversation with? If you have not already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the like button on YouTube, on Facebook, and stay tuned for the next Loop Live. We'll see you soon.